So now that we have our grid, what do we do with it? I'm going to create the very basic beginning of a player and show you some of the basics that come with Inkscape. One of the nice things about vector graphic is that it is completely scalable. So you're not identifying where individual pixels you are. You are actually identifying mathematically the shapes of the lines that you are placing down. And that's why I personally prefer using it because I like to go back and edit things a lot. So I'm going to create my little square player here. And I'm using a rectangle shape to do that with, although you might not recognize it as such because this little guide here will control, this little handle here will control how square our shape is or how rounded our corners are. So I want to fill that with something interesting colored and I do not right now want to have any outline. I will probably add one later, but right now I'm not concerned with adding an outline because I want to see that my width and my um, height are exact and an outline kind of changes that. So I'm going to do the same thing and create a couple of legs for my player. And I actually want my, my legs to be 12 pixels wide. So I'm going to go over here and set my pixels and my width to 12. So I want it to be about one and a half grid squares wide. Okay. And actually that's too wide for me. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I do want it to be eight pixels wide. There. And I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm using Control D or Apple D to duplicate to make a second copy. And there are his legs. I wanna line them up on my grid, but I actually wanna line it up in the center of the grid. So I don't like that it's snapping on me right here. And so if I use my shift button on my computer, it will take away the snapping. Alternatively, I can zoom in. That's one of the reasons why we created this second grid. And I can have it snap to the grid that I actually want it to snap to. There we go. And so there I have the beginnings of my player. I want to toss in an eyeball for them. And I think I want it to be about that big, but I do want it centered. So I'm going to select my eyeball. I'm going to select my pink and I'm going to go up here to object, align and distribute. And you can see that I can align it relative to my last selected so that my eyeball moves to the player body and not the player body to the eyeball or the average. And actually, I want that to be a little bit wider. Now we'll leave it for now. Okay, and then inside of the eyeball, I want a pupil. And I want that to be black. Oops. I'm going to go over here 
I'm going to say I want to turn on my snapping for my bounding boxes and I want to snap center edges and center middles. Mm, that's still not quite going to do it for me. There we go. So now my player has an eyeball. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to group it using Apple G or Control G so that it's one object. And then I'm going to duplicate that again and I'm going to update my X coordinate. And I'm going to add one to it so that I create an identical copy in the middle of my next grid. And I'm going to do that again, duplicate it, add one. And that's enough for now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him walking. So I'm going to control or Apple shift G to ungroup him. And in one of these, I'm going to make his leg, his uh, left leg shorter. And in the other, I'm going to make his right leg shorter. Oh, I thought it was going to be nice to me. There we go. And now I have a player that is walking in the forward direction. So that's very basic start to creating with Inkscape. I can save this and I can import it directly into Godot. Um, I can put it as the sprite for, as the, the texture for my sprite and Godot will take care of the rest for me. Now Inkscape is much more powerful than this. If I wanted to take any of these shapes, these square shapes, and convert them to a path, object, by going to object, no, path. There we go, stroke to path. It stops being, no, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. Let me undo that. That's something else that's cool, but not what we wanted. Object to path. It stops being a rectangular, a rectangle, and instead I get these nodes that I get to modify. So I can move one of these nodes around to change the shape of my object. I can also uh, move one of my handles to change the way the line reacts from those nodes. If I hit shift and click on this square, I can grab a second handle that interacts the other way. And if I click on this square because I would like my path to be smooth, I can come up here and make my node smooth. As you can see, I can do all sorts of um, just funky things, I guess, with Inkscape. And I don't have to start with a rectangle to do that. I can use this Bezier curve and draw out my own shape. And then from there, I have, using this Select Node tool, I have all of my same options. I can make this symmetric. And have um, a smooth shape. Um, so you can do a lot of different things in Inkscape and we'll get to some of those details late, later, but I do highly suggest you playing around with things and seeing what works for you.